What's up, everyone? Finally excited to unveil my amphibian room. It is an amphibian room because I have all salamanders in it, but I will be also adding some frogs at some point. I'm gonna have five empty spots, which is great. Um, and so what I wanna do in this video is really just kind of walk you through everything from start to finish, from changing the floor, the mechanicals, the temperature, where I'm keeping them, uh, how these things were built. I'm not gonna do a DIY on that because I have a carpenter who helped me build them and I'm sure I'll miss a lot of stuff. Uh, what animals I'm currently keeping right now, the current enclosures I have, and then really just also talk about what kind of new enclosures that I wanna add to this. And like I said, I wanna include a frog in one. Um, and so really excited. Um, I think this has been a long trip, but I'm psyched to finally have a dedicated room, so let's begin. So first things first, I got rid of the nasty carpet. I have these 12 by 24 inch tiles. I really like it. It matches the rest of my basement. It's clean, it's easy to clean. It looks spiffy. After the floor, what we have is the spigot, the water spigot, which is in lieu of having a laundry sink. It's so easy to fill the tanks now. This saves me a ton of time. Next, I've got these awesome cabinets. These are made for 40 gallon breeders, uh, two by four frame. Um, as you can see here, I've also got these pieces of wood for put the lights on. Um, pine doors, three quarter inch uh, birch plywood as well that's wrapped, it's stained, it's polyurethane. I love these. Uh, I have two large ones, so it's for six. And this is what I'm really working with now. I love them. Next, behind the scenes here, I have the filters, where the filters are gonna go, and then also have that tub, which is gonna be the water reservoir for my ultimate Miss King, which will essentially uh, supply water to all of these, but I'm gonna wait a little bit to set that up. Um, right now, I'm just hand misting it, so just wanted to show you guys that. Animal room wouldn't be complete without antique prints of salamanders, right? So here we have a spring salamander and a red salamander uh, over the red salamander cages. Um, and then I've got this really cool, this is large, this is over my greater siren tank. Of course, there's a greater siren in it. Uh, some newts and some other stuff, uh, fire salamanders. These my wife actually took and she had blown up for uh, the holiday. She gave that to me as a gift. And then over here is another um, salamander identification chart, including a greater siren at the top, which is awesome. I love that. And then over by my tiger salamander um, tank for the blotch tigers, uh, I have an anatomical chart for a um, Arizona tiger salamander, which is really rare at the top. And then beneath it is just another uh, tiger salamander um, print. And over here, I have several fire salamander prints and a frog print. Uh, so really love all these and love them in the room. First animals I want to talk about are my arboreal salamanders and the arboreal setup. This is a 18 by 18 by... 24, I think, or something like that. It's a exoterra. It's the only one that I have. Uh, this is all just the stand with all the storage I have underneath it to hide stuff. Um, there's a little bit of water in there in the false bottom. I've got, I can drain it out of the back because I drilled a hole. Uh, really love this enclosure. There's three in here, although I never see one of them. I'm a little worried that I don't know where he is. Um, and they're only out at night and I don't get in there and screw around with them. Um, but this one is really taken off. The plants and the moss are doing pretty well. Some of the ground plants died, so I replaced some. Um, I think it's just pretty moist and humid and the plants just for whatever reason didn't acclimate. So I had to replace a couple of plants, but for the most part, they're good. These guys eat all the time. They climb on the ceiling and on the glass. They're just all over the place. They're really cool animals. Their tongues fly out and catch stuff like a chameleon. So really love these. <laughs> then moving from left to right, we have my 75 gallon blotch tiger. This houses two large blotch tigers, which are about 10 and a half to 12 inches almost, I would say. Um, it's planted mainly with ferns, moss, creeping fig, things like that. Um, leaf litter. Um, it's got a false bottom and a hole drilled in the back for drainage. Um, there's also a bird's nest for in there, which is cool. It's starting to pop up back up again. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, this one is, uh, uh, you know, these guys are never really out. If you want to see them, look in an earlier um, video I uploaded about a month ago, and you'll be able to see them in action, but usually they're underground. Um, as you can see, I have a misting system hooked up, um, which actually services both this and the arboreal setup. It's a Miss King, um, and there's two on each corner of the 75 gallon, and I'm using a, a Nikru classic uh, LED planted light. Um, that's for the Miss King right there. And um, you know, just fill that bucket up with um, water and good to go. Next, we have what I call a, the spring salamander cabinet, which is this first one on top is a 20 gallon um, a redo for two captive bred spring salamanders. It's a stream palladarium uh, background. It's 
drilled with bulkheads um, to simulate water moving. As you can see, the water is pretty much crystal clear. I've got some narite snails in there for the cleanup crew. Uh, I've got some, um, some dwarf sag, sag and also some uh, anubius, um, some java moss. I also got a golden pothos in there, land moss, which is several different kinds of moss, watercress, um, and the salamanders in here are both um, have changed almost pretty much. And so um, this one is awesome. Uh, it's, again, it's in one of the cabinets. They live in those cracks in the rock. So this is actually where I've seen them in the wild in habitats like this. And then moving on, I have my 20 gallon uh, Bonique, this, the, the captive bread spring salamander. This one is 20 gallon um, drip wall simulation and houses one large wild caught spring salamander. The only reason that I have it is because this older guy who I met when I was on vacation for my birthday was using it as bait. And so I said, hey, you know, you should be doing that. These are really rare. And so he actually gave it to me. Um, he had had it in a bucket for a while. And so I don't know what it was exposed to. Otherwise, I would have let it go. But uh, it lives in here. There's liverworts, uh, moss, ferns, things like that. This is a really well-established tank. There's springtails. Um, I've got a bunch of narrates in cleaning the bottom. Um, and then here's the spring salamander. I actually saw him. Uh, he's right there. Uh, really cool animal. He takes food right from the tweezers. Now I've had him for a while, so um, he's pretty used to it, but love this setup. Next, moving on to my largest setup, which is a 150 gallon aquarium, which houses two juvenile greater sirens. These can, by the way, get up to three feet. So hence the large um, tank. Uh, lots of aquatic mosses, sag, anubias, um, all kinds of plants in here. I can't even name all of them. Um, in terms of the cleanup crew, it's quite large. I have about 20 to 25 narite snails. I have pest pond snails all over, which is fine because they get eaten um, and they keep reproducing, which is a good food source um, for part of the siren's diet. Uh, there's ghost shrimp, a mono shrimp. And then I also have, uh, I had six, um, I think they're called blue killifish. Um, a uh, person that I follow on Instagram had mentioned that that's what they look like. And sure enough, that looks exactly like what they were. There's still four of them swimming around in there. I'll show you some pictures. They, the other two might still be alive somewhere, but um, see, they're right there. They're really cool. Uh, they eat algae and just other stuff. And so really nice ecosystem that I've got going on here. Um, really, really enjoying it. Also, um, here are some of the ghost shrimp you can see kind of um, just fluttering about here. So they're all over the place, which is great. And here are some of those fish that I talked about, the uh, killer fish. They're really cool. I think they eat algae too, but really like these guys. They're all over. I'm going to get some more. And here are, here's one of the sirens. He's eating. I put some uh, catfish food um, in there. I feed him live stuff too, but uh, the person I got it from fed him this and um, suggested it. And they just tear it up. Um, they just smell it and they go get it. Um, usually I find them eating at night, but they're getting a little bit more bold. I was doing a water change here. And, you can see uh, the head. Yeah, these are really cool animals. I mean, like I said, really at nighttime is the time to go watch them. I have a flashlight uh, in the room and I'll just take it and, you know, where you go down there, you know, when it's dark and it's really cool to watch them swim around and stuff because you typically won't see that during the daytime uh, because they're nocturnal. So you can see I'm using the flashlight right now, but I uh, really love these. These are awesome. They're, gonna, they're really adapting well. This one essentially lives under this tree stump. Um, so yeah, this is an awesome setup. Next, we are moving on to a 40 gallon breeder, which houses three black chin red salamanders, Ruber, uh, Pseudotriton Ruber Schnecki. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing the last word right, but um, this is a drip wall set up again with land and water. Um, so it's a drainage area on the land side. Uh, lots of moss, liverworts, there's some algae growing in there. Um, and really love this one. This is one of my favorite setups. It was the bane of my existence for a while because the land area kept leaking, but it's really starting to take off. I've got some syngonium, some bird's nest ferns on the land, um, the pothos in the water helping to filter it. Um, got some driftwood uh, set up for the salamanders to hide under. Um, one of them is fully terrestrial, the other two are still aquatic, but one is changing. I've also got some creeping fig, as you can see. Uh, really wanted to make like a mountain drip wall. Um, really love this, uh, like a seepage. And um, it's really well, I've got some narrate snails in the water. Um, I've got some Anubias. I've got some uh, other things as well. Um, I've got a, <laughs> had a bunch of Amano shrimp, um, and I think most of them got eaten. I think there's one lone Amano shrimp that's still in there, um, and he's uh, really, you know, he's just starting to get bigger and eat. So I think uh, there's one of them under there. You can kind of see it. It's a little 
there's a little bit of algae on the glass, so kind of hard to see. Actually, here's the Amano shrimp. Um, you can see him. He's still in there tearing it up, which I love. He's eating the algae. Um, and then uh, this is one of the salamanders here that's changing. As you can see, he's already red. Uh, typically, um, these will be brighter than the Pseudotriton ruber ruber northern red. So uh, really great setup. I love this one as well. Now moving on to my northern red enclosure. This is a 20 gallon tall um, and I have a Pseudotriton ruber ruber in here. Um, and this is also a drip wall setup. Um, this one is one of probably my, this might be my favorite salamander in my collection. Um, he, he's always coming out and greeting me and, you know, takes food really easily. Um, and just really just uses all, all parts of his enclosure. A lot of moss, liverworts, creeping fig, moss, uh, I already said moss and, um, a whole bunch of, I don't even know what, I think they're clovers, some's watercress. Um, as you can see here, he is. I'm just not really bothering him. He's just, I'm not going to touch him. He's right there on land. He's usually in the water, but sometimes he's on land. So um, really, really pretty salamander. He's already pretty big. He's already about six inches. Uh, he's going to keep growing, I think, a little bit more. Um, they can get pretty decent sized. Um, here's him in the water. Just really cool animal to watch. Um, again, probably my favorite salamander species, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I have a lot of favorites, but this is, I think, probably my favorite. And like I said, just they're really unique to watch. They're pretty rare. Um, they're not uncommon, but I think they're just rare to find. And so um, being able to see this and watch them, um, kind, you know, just kind of enjoy the environment and grow and eat is, is really a, a blessing. Next, we go to my Eastern Newton enclosure, which is a little waterfall. Um, and this one is pretty well established, lots of aquatic plants. I've got some pothos and ferns on the land with moss, liverworts everywhere on the land, um, and tons of java moss in the water. Um, a lot of driftwood as well. Just try to really mimic a habitat where you might find these eastern newts. Uh, there's two in here. As you can see, there is a ton of moss and things like that. There are some ghost shrimp in here under to the left where I'm, I'm not really showing you, but there's, there's four ghost shrimp in here actually. Um, and then I also have a uh, Amazon sword and um, some other plants as well. Uh, there's actually some watercress out there. There's the shrimp right there. Um, so this one is one of my favorite setups actually. I did a slate wall, really, really love this one. The newts are really cool. There's two of them in here. I had three, unfortunately one died. I don't know why, couldn't save them. It was, um, I don't know if it was bacterial or viral or what, but um, here's the newts. They're just so cool. I love these. I've had these in my collection the longest. Um, they're just really cool. I might be looking to add more at some point. Maybe they'll breed or something. We'll see. Always have black worms in there. I'm constantly refeeding them. The black worms get out, but I'm not too worried about it. They they naturally just go pick them off out of the gravel. Um, but yeah, these newts are really cool. Um, like I said, I've had these the longest. They're they're totally just come out and bask like this guy is right now. And so uh, one of one of my favorite setups for sure. Just always a treat to come and watch these guys. Now moving on to my last enclosure. This is the one I just did. It's a 40 gallon for two barred tiger salamanders. It's a, uh, try to simulate a bog. There's land with plenty of burrowing room. Uh, there's a lot of moss, ferns, creeping fig. Uh, in the water, I've got some uh, nerites for the cleanup crew, springtails on the land for the cleanup crew, and uh, plants. I've got some uh, anubias. Um, I've got some uh, golden something. I always forget the name of those plants, is the grass ones. I've got a sword. Um, it said Anubius, uh, some fern, um, some java fern, java moss. Uh, really like this enclosure a lot. Um, one of the salamanders always burrows and the other one's always on land. This one's always um, in the water and the other one, excuse me, always burrows. Um, and this is the one that is usually in the water. He comes out sometimes, but uh, this is one of my, I really like this enclosure. I, I like the one bef I had before it, but I had to redo it a little bit and a lot happier with this one. They'll be able to really grow in this. These are still juveniles, so they're only about six inches long. They're gonna get a lot bigger. So may need to think about up upgrading at some point, but um, yeah, I just uploaded a video for this one if you haven't seen the DIY on it, so check it out. Um, and so the big questions here are, what should I be adding to my new animal room? Well, firstly, I actually have an empty <laughs> stand uh, before the animal room. So I'm going to put a, uh, a tall vivarium here or paludarium. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in that yet. So it's kind of kind of extend the animal room just a bit. Well, as you can see, I have three empty spots on this one and one empty spot there. 
So I have four empty 40 gallon breeders that I can have in here. So what am I gonna put? I don't know, I think I'm gonna have a frog, cave salamanders for sure, so that's two. And then I'll have two more. I was thinking maybe a spotted salamander and something else. And then plus that other one that I just showed you outside of this room. So five empty enclosures. So gotta think long and hard. Um, like I said, I think I already want cave salamanders. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind. But I'm definitely going to get a frog. I'm going to be thinking either a green or a pickerel frog. I think a bullfrog is just too big for a 40-gallon. I don't think that's fair. So um, probably not going to do a bullfrog. But anyways, uh, it'll be a paludarian. Um, actually, let me show you what else I got here. actually already have three 40-gallon breeders, so I just need one more. And then, like I said, to buy that paludarian um, for that stand outside of the room. In addition, I have all these materials. I have slate slate, creek bed, gravel, and other rocks from a creek, tons of driftwood. Um, and this is all sterilized too, by the way. And then tons of these red rocks. I love these. I might use this for spring salamander, excuse me, cave salamander setup. We'll just see. So have a lot of raw materials to, to keep um, building some of these setups. Anyhow, everyone, thank you so much again for taking the time to come check this out. I am really happy with the way that this turned out and um, get ready for some really cool new builds. I think there's gonna be some really fun stuff to work on here. And, you know, like I said, this couldn't have been, I couldn't have been happier about how this turned out. Um, this is just exactly kind of how I envisioned it and gives me a nice room to come down and just kind of de-stress after a long day of work. So um, thank you so much for tuning in and, um, you know, obviously subscribe if you're into this stuff, uh, like, comment, you know, give me suggestions. I'm, you know, I'm always getting back to everybody. So really appreciate you guys taking the time and uh, we'll be back to you soon with some new builds.